All right, Rock Addicts, this is DJ Rem from Rock Addict Radio, and I have Emily on the line from the band September Morning. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm doing excellent today. You are my third interview today. Everything has been killer, and everyone has actually called in today. So <laughs> That's always a plus. <laughs> yes, it is. So I would like to start if you could um, mention your so- yourself and your spot in the band and then in the other members that aren't with us today. Okay, I am the singer of the band September Morning, and actually the kind of the creative force behind this this project, which is a multimedia transmedia project. And um, we have a drummer, of course, and his name is Sean. And we have two guitarists. One is named Steve. One is named John. Um, and then we have a bass player, Scott. So it's a five piece. Okay, very cool. And. How long has September Morning been around, and how did you guys get started? It's been about, around about three years. Um, we The project actually started about four years ago, like the media project of it. And because it is a transmedia, it's not really just a band. It's basically um, wrapped around the storyline and a central character named September. And um, it has a storyline that, that goes along with the whole... Um, you know, musical aspect of everything. And that's what we started on first, and that's what we created first. And then the music came, like, about a year, a year and a bit later. So that's how it kind of developed. Okay. And now, is there is there a full album out there? Um, yes, there's an album called Melancholia okay. out there, and it's available in Europe. Um, but you can get it on import through Amazon.com and BestBuy.com and a few other sites around the web. Um, they're all listed on their Facebook page. If you go to facebook.com forward slash September Morning, M O U R N I N G, you can find it there. And also, you can find um, links there to Top Cow Comics, which is doing our comic book in tandem with us, and a lot of other links to all the other media that we're doing. We're doing some with MTV Geek, um, some live action episodes of the comic and the storyline. And all this great stuff. So it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool story. Do you know anything about the story? I do not. I'm hoping you'll tell me some. <laughs> um, it's about this girl named September who is transformed into a reaper. And if you know the Grim Reaper, um, reapers take souls. Basically, that's right. their job. So basically, she was a girl. And she was deemed, quote, unquote, worthless by fate. And she was, you know, um, supposed to be taken by a reaper. And the reaper went down and, and found her and fell in love with her. And instead of taking her, he sacrificed his soul, his self, his, all of his powers to keep her alive. And by doing that, he made her half reaper and gave her his powers. And so she walks in the world of the living and the world of the dead. So she's like half human and half reaper. And, um, and basically the whole story revolves and wraps around her being this special kind of reaper because she can do both of those things. She can also put lives that she takes into other people's bodies and, and like, have them have a second chance at life and all this sort of stuff. So she can basically twist fate and try... And what she does is she tries to do the right thing and she tries to make things right by doing that and giving people second chances. But by doing that, there's this butterfly effect that kind of follows her, which, you know... She, you can't really mess around with fate because it affects all this other stuff that's connected to it. And um, that's what she ends up finding out. So it's kind of like a learning process for her of how to use this power for, you know, good and, and to do the right thing. So. Well, very cool. There's a, definitely a lot going on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's a cool story, though. It has a lot of, like, um, different parts in it and different characters and it's going to be really cool. And um, like, like I said, we're working with MTV Geek, and uh, that's slated to come out in March, and we're going to do these online webisodes with them, um, which is basically a live action of the comic book. So you're going to see this storyline come to life, and it'll have a bit of music in there, too, and it'll be really cool. So we're excited about it. It sounds really cool. And so how did you come up with this concept to go in this type of direction with this? Um, well, I mean, like I said, it, it, I, I had this before I even started the band. Like, I, I wanted to work um, work on something that's not just a music project. I just didn't want to do another band. And I wanted to do something, because I, I draw, I paint, I sculpt, I do, you know, I, I do all sorts of art besides music. And 
um, and I'm a performance artist on top of that. So, so this is kind of like the ultimate sort of project for that. You know, it contains everything in it, and um, and so for me, that's that's kind of like what made it, you know, so attractive to to, to do. And when I met Mark Silvestri, and I met him, gosh, four and a bit years ago. And I told him about this project and what I wanted to do. He seemed to be the perfect person to help me do this because if you know anything about Top Cow Comics or Mark Silvestri, he was one of the founding fathers of Image Comics. He's an amazing, amazing artist. And his characters, his female characters, are very strong female characters. He has a bunch of them that are centralized in his comic books for Top Cow, Witchblade, Magdalena, um, and they're all like super strong and they're sexy but they're strong and and they have like no fear <laughs> basically, you know. And and that's the type of character I wanted to develop. You know, a really strong woman, like a really strong girl that, you know, people like fans could look up to and, and really kind of like be you know, like be inspired by, basically. And so he's the perfect person to help me with this and, and he loved the idea and so we've been working on it ever since. Very cool. And I have to say I really I really appreciate the fact that you're bringing all these different elements together in this because it really shows the artistry behind it and it's not just like you said it's not just a you know it's you're not just a band there's a lot more to it. And uh, and there's a lot of bands out there that you know they really aren't into it like you would think a band would be. So I I don't know. I just think it's really cool I guess is what I'm trying to say. Thank you, thank you. I think there, there's just a lot of different levels to this project, and a lot of symbolism, a lot of imagery, a lot of, like, you know, just just a, a lot of different levels to this project. And, and I think that it's, it's, um, it's different in that element that it has, you know, and, and the storyline especially makes it even more unique in its, in its way. Right. Well, and you're bringing so much to the fan with this. I mean, that's, that's yeah. really cool. Well, it's, I wanted to make it like an immersive world. So, like when, you, when you're, you know, it's summer morning, and you can pick your level of it too. Like if you just like the music, you can just be a fan of the music. If you just like the storyline and the comics, just read the comics. If you just like the TV thing or the webisode thing, you can just watch that. But if you like it all, you can kind of like be immersed by this whole project, you know. And any other offshoots that I have, it games or movies or whatever we do with it, like. It can be all immersive, and it can be its own world, kind of like you know, its own little Harry Potter world. You know, it can it can have that to it. Um, it's a giant project, but I think that once we kind of get it out there and, and people see how it develops, I think they'll be really interested in it. And you know, we, it's really important that we have you know our fans participate in helping us build this project and and helping us guide it. You know, and and guide the storylines and things like that. And and that's going to come into play, too. So we're really excited about it. Yeah, very cool. And I know all of us at Rock Addict Radio are doing our small little part to help uh, push and promote this for you. So very cool. Yeah, no, I really appreciate it. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. So what do you guys have lined up for, like, live shows? Are you doing many live shows right now? Um, we got off a tour a little bit ago um, with a band called Gemini Syndrome. They're on Warner Brothers, and they're going to be launching this year, too. They're a great band. You should definitely check them out. And we got a tour with them um, in the September, and then we did the um, the Rock Vegas show with Mel and Manson and Rob Zombie in Vegas. Um, and then we've had some, a little bit of time off. We're working on um, some business parts of this project and also the MTV thing because we're developing that so that we can go in and film that. And then we have um, a mini tour coming up in January, and then we have a show January 11th um, at uh, down in San Diego at the House of Blues, and then we have something January 25th too. Um, we're going to be playing Nam, the um, the Nam show in yeah. around San Diego, and it's basically going to be the Schecter party at the juke ju- joint that we're going to be playing. So, so we have a bunch of different things coming up um, live performance wise as well so can you kind of can you kind of just briefly so kind of it's in Anaheim Anaheim is in Anaheim so oh. alright very cool mm-hmm. 
Can you kind of briefly walk me through a live show? Is I mean, is a live show for you guys is be, because of all those different aspects and different parts you have to this project? Are the are the live shows kind of theatrical in, in a sense? Oh yeah, they're very theatrical. I um, recently we played at um, in Hollywood at the Roxy, um, and we played there, and a lot of our fans came up to us afterwards, and they're like, "Oh my God, it was like watching a movie when we watched you guys. It was it was very, it was so theatrical, and, and there's such a presence there of 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 something other than just you know." this band, you know, and, um, and it's, it's very much like that, there's a lot of interaction, there's, um, you know, different, little different things that I do on stage that are just totally different than what you would see with a normal band, it has, it has a lot of theatricality to it, like, I, my, the people that I look up to in music, Marilyn Manson, Alice Cooper, Emily Autumn, like, those are very theatrical people and very, you know, they, they have a presence and they have a theatricality to them that is just unsurpassed and, and just huge and larger than life. And that's kind of like where we're taking this. It's something that, you know, begs for that. And, you know, I don't think there's anybody out there right now that's really doing that. So we hope to really bring that theatricality back into, you know, like mainstream like that. So Nice. And, and I think, I'm guessing the fans probably appreciate that because... You know, you pay a lot of money to go to a show, and you hope to see more than just the band standing there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, my whole thing is when I go to a show, like, I don't want to see people that are walking down the street go up there and play music. Because for me, going to a show has always been escapism. Like, I want to be taken away from where I'm at. Right. I want to be immersed in something that's beyond me, and that's, you know, different. And, and... If it's not through the music, like, and, like, if we just sing Muse, like, for example, Muse isn't very theatrical, but just the way they're presented and their music is, it kind of, it just takes you somewhere, you know? Yep. Um, and if you could have the theatricality on top of that, it would even take you even farther, you know? And for me, that, that's super important for me because I, I love things like that. I grew up in the theater, like, I... You know, I, I love all that sort of stuff, and, and I think it's, it's amazing, and it's amazing to watch. Yes, definitely. So, I, I think we may have touched on this, but I'm not sure. Where did you guys record the album at? Um, we recorded most of Melancholia in uh, New York, actually. Like, the vocals and most of the guitars and stuff like that. We recorded some of it out in Los Angeles um, with Sahaj Chikatin from the band Ra. Um, and he recorded our drums and some um, bass, and we recorded some guitars over at another studio, too. So we kind of had, like, New York and L.A. recording time for that album. And then we mixed it up in Vancouver with Dave Ogilvy, and Dave did, oh, gosh, Dave's done everybody, like, uh, everybody from, like, Ogre to Marilyn Manson, you know, Nine Inch Nails, like, I mean, he's, he's pretty big, and that's, that sort of genre and sphere of, of people, and, and he's done in the Birthday Massacre as well. And the label that we put this out on is, is the home of the Birthday Massacre over in Europe, so um, they did their first couple of records over there. So they uh, definitely were keen on seeing Dave mixing it, and so we had Dave do it, and Dave's awesome. <laughs> he's so much fun to be around. We had so many awesome nights at Dave's studio. <laughs> Um, and probably some that I won't remember, but <laughs> <laughs> they were awesome anyway. Um, but yeah, so he's really cool. And the album sounds, you know, big and large and huge, and there's space in it. It's not too crushed, so it's not too, you know, like that. And it's just, it's, it sounds good. It sounds good. For what it is, it definitely sounds good. And then we put out a single um, here in the, in the U.S., um, called Before the Fall, and we put out a video for that as well. And you can see that on our site at septembermorning.com, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G.com. And um, that was actually licensed to Tino Wrestling for their pay-per-view commercial in August. Oh, very cool. So, yeah, so you saw that on Spike TV. If, you were, if you're a big wrestling fan, you probably saw maybe clips of it on Spike TV throughout August and September. Um, because that was a big thing for us. And um, they really loved it. We got a great feedback. We got a, a lot of fans from that, and, and they really were stoked on it. So 
Um, and the, the video's been doing great. You know, it's on YouTube. It's gotten over 75,000 views or something like that. Excellent. On that. Um, and it's, you know, it's doing great. It has a bit of a storyline in it. Um, I actually talked to uh, the writer I'm working with, the comic book writer, um, David Hine, who wrote Spawn. I don't know if you know Spawn. But um, he's been Spawn, The Darkness, a bunch of other um, comics. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, he's awesome. He's, he's working with us on, on the backstory of September morning and also the MTV webisodes. So we were talking about it, and he was, like, super impressed with the video. You know, he just thought it was, it was abstract enough to be cool, but it still got the storyline in there and stuff like that. And he, was, he just thought that it was really cool. So we had a nice little chat about that the other day. So that was really refreshing. <laughs> so check it out if you haven't checked it out. Definitely. And I was... I was listening to you uh, actually before I did the interview. That's kind of how I kind of prep myself for an interview. That's about the only thing I do is I just kind of I listen to the band's music and it definitely yeah. got me stoked up to talk to you. So I definitely recommend everybody check it out and definitely watch the video. I honestly have not watched the video yet. Actually, I saw it and I was like, oh, there's a video for this song. I need to check that out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah, definitely check out the video and... Like I said, you'll touch on some of the storyline. It'll all kind of like come full circle, and you'll kind of figure it out. It's it, it's going to be really cool. Like once we all launch it all and have everything in place for it, I think it's going to be be a really cool um, project and something people can really dive into and and kind of like explore. Right. Well, and I hope it blows up for you guys and just goes crazy. That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> we hope so, too. <laughs> so. Okay, so... There's so, there's so much I want to do with it. It's like I have so many ideas, and every day I have even more ideas. So it's kind of like this constant, like, jotting down things I want to do, and this and that and the other thing, and it's like, it just never ends. It's like, it, 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 it's amazing to have a project that feeds your creativity as much as you have to feed it, and that's what this project is. And that's what makes it so special for me, is that it's, you know, it's like, it's like everything for me, you know? So. Yeah, I, I can tell just from talking to you that you have so many ideas that you want to share that you don't even know where to start. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. It's like one thing always leads to another, uh -huh. and then I just end up going on this tan tangent, so you just have to stop me. <laughs> no, I think it's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's very refreshing to me. I mean, I talk to a lot of killer bands, so it, it, it's it's not that... Not everyone isn't passionate about what they do, but every once in a while I talk to somebody like you that I can just tell that they have their whole heart and soul into this, and this is like everything to them. So I, it's very refreshing. Thank you. Thank you. So what, uh, what got you into music and art and all these things? What kind of influences did you have growing up that made you want to do all this? Um, well, I, I started I first stepped on stage when I was four years old. So, like, I, I've been, you know, in theater and performance art and ballet and movement and, uh, you know, singing, like, my whole entire life, basically. So it's kind of like, it's just what I do, you know? It's, <laughs> it's like walking <laughs> for me, you know? It's, I, I started so young that it just, if I didn't do this, I don't know what I would do, you know? It's just that kind of thing. Um, and it's, it's, I've always had a passion for it. Like, it's always been me. It's, it's always been me saying to my mom, get me to ballet class, like, two hours early so I can do warm-ups and Pilates and this and that before I even get into class. Like, it's, I, I was the one that was always pushing, you know? And I think that's super important for when you're a kid. Like, you have to do what drives you, and you have to do what your passion is. And I was lucky to have my mom that, that let me do that, you know? Um, and my my dad as well later. So it's you know it's I've been really lucky to have that. So nice. Well, horns high to um, caring parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we all have our problems with our parents, and right, <laughs> I right. I do, <laughs> but but like for the beginning stages of what I did, like if I didn't have them taking me to class like every like day, basically, right. I this would have never came out of all of that, you know? And it's building blocks. Your whole life is like, it's, it's a giant, it's a giant house, it's a giant building, and, and each block is a piece of it, and you build upon it. And, and you never, to me, it's weird, because as you, as you grow up, like, you never really think that you're going to be somewhere until you get there, and then you're like, oh, this is where I need to be, and this is what feels right. And, and I just have 
all of our fans and all of you know my fans through everything I've done through all the different projects to September morning to break my third project basically in music and like all of my fans that have stayed with me from the very beginning like this is because of you and I thank you for that so I'm like forever grateful to them very good very good so how did you come up with the name September morning where, where did that come from well, September Morning is actually the Reaper name of the character um, in the comic book. So, like, her name is Emily, <laughs> and but when she is transformed into a Reaper, like, her Reaper name is September Morning. And so that that is the character's name. Um, I I had a friend that passed away, like, a very, very close friend of mine that passed away um, a few years ago in September, and prior to starting this project. And basically, I kind of dedicated that part of it to him. So that's why September became part of the project, you know. Um, so it has a month sort of like no affiliation as well. It's just like a name. But, um, and then mourning, like, obviously the whole death and reaper and right. death sort of circle, that just kind of like played into it. And, and that's how it kind of be. Well, I'm sure your friend that passed is out there somewhere very proud of right now. Yeah, so. I hope so. <laughs> yes. So. Okay, so you kind of touched on this, but I'm going to give you a chance to plug this again. Where's the uh, where's the best place for people to go to find out more about September Morning and uh, to to buy the music and, and merchandise? Okay, we have um, we have the before the fall single is available on iTunes, US iTunes, so you can go there and grab it. Um, we have the album Melancholia is available on Amazon.com and BestBuy.com and select, select sites are on the web as well. So if you just Google it, you'll probably be able to find it more easily. And then if you'd like to get merch, we definitely have a merch store up right now. And it's on Big Cartel, um, SeptemberMorning.BigCartel.com. And you can go there and grab T-shirts and stuff that we had on tour if um, you're at any of our shows and you wanted to grab a T-shirt or posters or whatever. Um, they're all up there, and we do have a sale going on now, so take advantage of that. <laughs> um, and then, um, as far as the websites, we have SeptemberMorning.com, which is our hub um, for everything September morning. And then we have our Facebook.com forward slash September morning, and we have, you know, we still have a MySpace, believe it or not, and it's Twitter.com forward slash I am Emily Lazar is our Twitter, actually, and I kind of run that, so... Um, but that's for the band as well. And we have a YouTube um, channel, which is youtube.com forward slash the September morning and reverbnation.com forward slash September morning. And there are a bunch of different links for other sites as well on those sites. So if you, you know, if you're into like, I don't know, whatever other site, there's a bunch of links for those as well. So you can probably find them there. And our lyrics are if you're inter- into lyrics and like very much into like what I'm saying and, and following the storylines like the lyrics are posted on lyrics.mad and places like that too so you can hook, up, hook it up through those things Okay, well, very cool, and I, I strongly suggest everybody that listens to this interview, uh, if you check out September Morning and you dig them, uh, buy some merchandise, buy the CD or download it. Just help support the help support the cause because this uh, these projects are not free to the bands. It costs money, yeah. so help them out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. So okay, so this question is specifically for you. If I uh, if I grabbed your iPod or MP3 player, however you listen to music, what kind of what kind of bands would I find you listening to right now? Uh, you know, you're gonna. <laughs> the funny thing about my iPod is that I just have a, a, a like wide variety of stuff on my iPod, and it's just I go from Emily Autumn to like Eminem <laughs> and everything in between. I'm like all over the place with my music taste. Because I just find that, for me, like, inspiration comes from all different places. And especially with music, and I can't be listening to the same thing over and over again, or else, or the same type of music over and over again. Sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, listening to black metal, sometimes I'm listening to hard rock, sometimes I'm listening to theatrical rock, sometimes, you know, like Nightwish, sometimes with Intentations, and, you know, it just depends. Um on kind of like my spirit and where I am in a day. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm, I'm into a lot of different kind of artists right now. Like, 
more kind of like underground artists that I'm kind of listening to um, for hip hop. And then, you know, as far as rock, it's more kind of like the European metal sort of scene that I'm kind of into right now. Like I said, Nightwish and Within Temptation and bands like that over there. And, um, and then Autumn, definitely. And yeah, I mean, it's just, I'm just kind of like all over the board right now with my musical taste, you know? Well, I can I totally appreciate th- that because I am the same way. I listen to all you know. I can listen to recently. I've started listening to jazz. I can go to. I can listen even to country. Yeah, I was just. It's funny you said Eminem. I was just recently listening to to Lose Yourself. I love that track. And yeah, I mean, like old Eminem is really good. Yep. I forgot how good it is, and it I was is. like, oh my god, it's really good. And then I mean, there's a lot of like um, there's that who's that rapper that that track called Swimming Pool. That, he's really good too. And then there's there's a, like this Hop, Hopson guy that's huge on the internet. He, he doesn't even have a deal, and he's like touring the world, and he's he's fucking awesome. He's, excuse my language. He's, he's great, you know. And um and he's awesome too. And just I don't know. I've just been getting into hip hop a little bit more. And I love the weekend and you know bands like that. I love Lana Del Rey. She kind of has like a trip hop sort of feel to her. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So there's like a lot of different kind of weird bands, like artists that I listen to besides, I listen to Kesha. Like, <laughs> I listen to, you know, like all different types. And then like I'll go and, you know, listen to like Cannibal Corpse for a while. Right. Or, you know, yep. Bands like that. You oh, know? I get it. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of like I'm all over the place. It's just, like I said, it just depends where I'm at <laughs> mentally. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, yeah, and the reason I appreciate that, I mean, besides the fact that I'm, I do the same, is that I find, because with the bands I talk to, the bands that, people that don't get stuck in a rut of one genre of music, because I hate, I hate labels yeah. in, in general for, for music, and uh, and not the not the I don't mean the label that makes them, but you know, this labels in general, like you know, whether it's metal or rock or thrash metal or speed metal, you know, I don't get into the whole genre thing. And bands just have bands, people that have a wide eclectic taste of music. I think their music personally sounds a lot better. Oh, I think so too. It definitely does. I mean, it's it's just kind of like the more you know, it's kind of like this. It's if you have a wide vocabulary of words. In, that you know, like if you've been schooled and, and or you read a lot, you're going to be a lot well more well spoken than somebody who has a very limited amount of knowledge with like verbiage and words, right? Like it's the same thing with music. If you have a wide variety of music in your brain to kind of like bounce back and forth from and get ideas from and be inspired from, you're going to have a lot more to give is what I think. Yep. You know, um, that's just how I've always kind of functioned. And, and my favorite bands are the ones that take chances. Like, you know, I mean, if you listen to anything from Nightwish, like, each album is different. Like, it's not like they're just repeating the same album, same song, over and over and over again. It's like everything is different. It's a lot more theatrical than anything you see here stateside, but I think that makes it cool because it's got, like, there's just, different stuff like it's just different and it's I just get so bored with the same rehashing of the same stuff over and over again there's a band called Dead Sarah that just is from LA yep I've heard of them yeah they've been kicking around for like six years but now they're taking off and they're going to be touring with some big bands next year and they're just amazing and her voice is incredible she sounds like Janis Joplin but but besides that, the music is like, it has this retro sound you sing, it has a little bit of like Jack White in there, it has, has it's crunchy, it's not super compressed, it has space to breathe in the mix, it's, like there's so much about it that's so right, and it just kind of all comes together, and if you listen to the album, every song is a little bit different on that album, and I was lucky enough to listen to it, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And I hope that, like, one day I make an album that I can be super proud of like that and just be like, everything has its own dynamic and everything has its own voice. You know, every song has its own voice. I think that's super, super important. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I tell you, the, the, the you know, kind of that symphonic metal sound coming out of Europe right now is amazing. There's so many cool Oh, bands. yeah. Oh, symphonic metal in Europe right now is 
ridiculous. Yeah. Really. They've got some really amazing, amazing things coming out from there. And it, it's just so funny because over here, it's like people kind of get it, but they don't really get it. And But then if they listen to it, they totally get it. So it's, it's just, I think it's just like a... I don't know what it is, but it usually things break in Europe first anyway, so, right. you know, go figure. Well, I think I, I, you know, I grew, I grew up when, you know, in the '80s when all the the big hair bands were big, and it, it's it's yeah. kind of like a mix of that, but more metal, and I think that's why I appreciate it so much. Yeah, yeah, probably, probably. I, to me, it, it feels brand new. You know, right. it's yep. so new, and like, and wow, I've never heard this before, like sort of thing, and and that that makes makes it like super exciting, you know. And yeah. it's like, oh, look what I discovered, sort of thing. So. Yeah, that's always like a treat, you know? Definitely. I tell you, real quick, a band that I found recently, they're called Power Wolf. I don't know if you heard them, but you should check yeah. them out. Okay, cool. I will. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you'd dig them. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. So what, do you guys, so what do you guys do to relax when you're not doing all this stuff you have going on? What do you do to just chill and kind of recharge your batteries? Um, well, <laughs> there's like, recently, I mean, well, for the past couple of years, there's no recharge there's no time for me like, it's just I literally it's bouncing from one thing to the next it's like it's, this project is kind of all consuming in my life right <laughs> to, to put it lightly and it just takes over like everything I do um I, I love going to movies though like movies are a big thing for me and just like going to the theater and being able to sit there for two hours and not do anything with the band and not think about anything music wise and just sit there and like concentrate on a movie and follow the storyline that, that's escapism right now and so that's always fun to do and then just hang out with my friends and you know exercise or do something that kind of like something that allows me not to think about what I do like every minute of every day right so right it's, it's definitely a good thing <laughs> yeah it's nice to escape from the world once in a while that's for sure yeah for sure for sure. Okay, so what uh, what sets you guys apart? I mean, obviously, I think I know, but what sets you, I'll let you say, what sets you apart from all the other bands out there? Why should people check your site out? Why should people listen to your music and go to shows? Um, well, I think just the whole storyline aspect and transmedia aspect of, of this band is, is basically what sets us apart. That and, and the visual as well, like the way we look, the way... We, you know, the costumes that I designed and, and made with, with my friend Eric um, Oswong, who's an amazing costume designer, and he and I have gotten together and, and created this image. And, um, and, you know, I mean, all of that is just, it makes it unique, you know? It makes it more of like, you're going to see a real show, show like some place that you can escape your normal life and go and just be a part of, you know, like I go to the movies and I escape for two hours, like this is what people's escapism, hopefully. And I hope that makes a difference in, in their lives and, and gives them something to kind of like decompress with, because I think we all need that. <laughs> right, well, and it sounds like you're going to get, it's going to be more than just like going to a concert, you're getting an experience when you go see right. guys. Right, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that is definitely where we're headed with this. Very cool. So. Yeah. So, speaking of, of live shows, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened to you at a live show? Um, well, gosh, there's a couple of crazy things at shows that we've done. Um, but, I mean, it, I've, I've gotten hurt a couple of times just because I, it's weird when I'm performing, like, I don't, I don't really know what I do. It's like I'm up there and I kind of do what I do, and then I get off stage and I'm like, oh, shit, what did I do to my ankle? Or, oh, oh you geez. know? And it, it's just weird, like, I go into, like, a like a space wormhole and then just, like, kind of come out the other side, like, what the fuck just happened to me? But um, I remember we were playing with Manson, and I was um, just, just up there, you know, killing it as much as I can and running around like a crazy person like I do. And then I just kind of jumped off stage onto a barricade. And when I did it, I was in... Of course, heels because I always wear heels, <laughs> and I and I just like cracked my ankle, and like I didn't feel it when it happened, but I felt it when I got off stage because it was literally the size of like a watermelon. Oh, like wow. it couldn't even like it was my boot zipper was like cooling apart because my ankle had swollen so much, 
and I couldn't even walk. It was crazy how much I had just messed it up. So um, that was a little bit crazy. I remember taking so much Advil the day after to get to the next show that after the show, I threw up, like, right near the base, Manson's base tag, and he's like, that's so metal, and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> and I'm like, puke the garbage can and stuff like that, and Manson's like, hey, what's up, but I'm like, yeah, <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, it's so bad, just so many things that happen during shows, and, you know, um, but it's all good experiences, <laughs> it's all fun. Very cool. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to tell the world about September morning that I have not asked you? Now is a chance. Hi to your dog, by the way. <laughs> he, you know what? That's 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 Ace. He makes an appearance in every single interview I do. He he loves to be a part of the show. That's awesome. Um, yeah. Um, just thank you. I just want to say thank you to our fans. I mean, we can't do this without you. We can't do this without your support. Without you buying the record. Without you buying the single. Without you buying merch, t-shirts, whatever. Without your support, we can't function. So. I just want to thank all of our fans for being there and sending in the amazing fan art that you always send in. We, we get amazing fan art from our fans. They're so freaking creative. And just sending in all of that and, and just being so supportive and, and excited about what's coming up and talking to me online and talking to me on Facebook and, and we're putting up a message board on our site soon and we're going to have that for everybody to kind of like just go on and we'll all be going on it as like a chat room and just kind of chatting with our fans and, and stuff like that and it's just so important to us to like have that connection and, and we really appreciate it with each and every one of you so I just want to thank them and that's, that's what I have to say <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> okay I have one last thing to ask you to do if you don't mind I would love a couple of radio tags yeah sure no problem so the first one, if you can say, you know, this is Emily from September Morning, and you're listening to RockAddictRadio.com. This is Emily from September Morning, and you're listening to RockAddictRadio.com. Perfect. Thank you. And then the second one, do the same thing, but throw on there that you're listening to DJ Rem at Rock Addict Radio. This is Emily from September Morning, and you're listening to DJ Rem from RockAddictRadio.com. All right, very cool. I, once again, I just want to thank you so much for taking the, the time to talk to me. I think you are an amazing person, and you, you, this, this, this thing you got going is, I think, is really going to blow up and do amazing things for you guys. It's very cool. Yeah, so, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, you too. Okay, well, you have a great day, and I'll talk to you again sometime. Okay, sounds good. Thank bye. you. Yep, bye. Okay, bye.